turn into honey and pollen which is the protein for the young that they'll be um, developing for the summer. Behind me you can see the monastery bell which is used to call us to meals and behind me is the monastery refectory where we have our meals mainly in silence and at least at supper we have a book read to us and um, it's not a bad thing to be eating in silence given that you're sitting meeting the same people uh, every day. One of the things I find challenging or I need to watch myself for is becoming over familiar with uh, things I see every day or things that surround me. Be that people or plants, or the sky, or clouds, that I don't notice them. It was Hegel, it was the philosopher Hegel who said, it's the familiar, but precisely because it is familiar, is not known. The familiar, precisely because it's familiar, is not known. Now I walk past this heather bed several times a day, on my way to the church or the refugee, and I'm not sure how often I actually notice it. Because the way, the route I go is familiar. It's familiar to me. And my mind is often full of thoughts of where I'm going to, what I'm going to do there, what I'm going to eat for supper. And as I say, we do this with people, you know, we, we we know who they are. We don't, we don't expect anything different from them. We have them, they're familiar to us. Oh. And that familiarity, it's useful for some things that we can become familiar, you know, driving to work or washing the dishes or, you know, familiarity is a healthy thing, but it's also uh, means we can miss out on so much. I can become distanced from my experience of that which surrounds me and miss out on much of the richness of the world that I live in. Remember that first day you went to school, how much you noticed? Or I remember going to study in Chicago and that first day walking to the college from where I was staying, noticing everything, the hedges, the route, the walk. After a few days I knew the route and I didn't notice anything, you know, I was busy me getting there. And as I say, I think we have to check ourselves if we're to experience a, a richer world. I ask myself not to become blind to the beauty and strangeness, strangeness that is all around me, all around me. Now I live in a privileged place with a lot of beauty and I know that's not true for everybody but I think it was Kavanagh who, who said that we've got to rediscover that newness that was in every stale thing when we looked at it as children 
we discover the newness that was in every stale thing when we looked at it as children, as children. So the challenge for me is to be present to where I am and what I'm seeing. It often means turning off my mind, my wandering mind, and opening up my senses. You know, my senses which have been deadened to a certain extent by technology. You know, touch is about touch screens. So it's, it's what am I seeing? What am I hearing? The sound of the bees. What am I tasting? What am I smelling? The smell of the heather, the scent. We are sensual beings and probably spend too much of our time in our minds, in our minds. It's interesting to ask, or for me to ask myself at the end of the day, what have I seen that is new? Have I just seen anything new? And I'm all surprised how little I may have seen during the day, if I think back on the day. It was someone who said that if you were to write down all the things you did in a day, it could take a lifetime. And that's what Joyce was recording in Ulysses, all the thoughts and the anvils and goings on of one man in one day in his life. So, things I do to try and uh, um, enhance my experience of my world is that I ask myself, you know, can I pick out one thing new as I walk in the woods today or in the park or on the road? You know, is there anything I can see that's new? I always try to find something new. And if my mind is really wandering, I start to name things, you know, a tree, an oak tree, ivy, Path, and that brings me into presence with uh, my immediate surroundings and noticing things. It's really a question of discovering, rediscovering at this precious time when things have slowed and stopped, the extraordinary that lies waiting in what we take to be ordinary. See the extraordinary, to experience the extraordinary in the ordinary that surrounds us. That's the, the way I try to look at it. And it gives me a richer, if I can do it, it gives me a richer and deeper experience of my world, which I think that is what many of us are looking for.